Movie days in the summer, especially when it's hot and humid or when it's raining are some of the best days. You, your family, and your friends all pile into the car excited and ready to see the next big summer blockbuster sweeping the nation. But while most of us enjoy the tradition of going to the movies, we don't enjoy the prices. $30 for two buckets of popcorn? And now with inflation, maybe that's one bucket, I don't know. On top of a $15 movie ticket too? Like, no thanks. Well, one day a handy company appeared seemingly out of thin air that could help solve all of our movie going problems. Gone were the days of ultra expensive tickets. Now we could all pile into our cars and see as many movies as we want for the low price of $10. It seemed too good to be true, but you would be insane to not sign up for it if you're an avid movie lover. And so you do. And just like that, you have thousands of movies right at your fingertips. And with the help of MoviePass, you can finally afford to buy that insanely overpriced, inexplicably delicious movie theater popcorn. Extra butter, please. And for a bit, everything was great. You get to see all the biggest movies at the lowest prices. What could possibly be bad about that? Well, suddenly things with this miracle movie app began to rapidly change and deteriorate. One day you open the website to learn that your $10 unlimited service has been gutted. Now, instead of seeing every movie ever for one monthly fee, you can only see three movies a month. Remember the days when you could purchase all the tickets, no matter what movie you were going to see? Well, those were gone. Now your ticket purchases are limited if you're planning on seeing high demand films. Then one day, everyone's least favorite thing is introduced, surge pricing. You know, when you have to spend the extra $50 for an Uber because a football team just so happens to be in town? Yeah, the same thing, but this time it's for popular movies. Now you might be still thinking, okay, that doesn't sound super bad. They've got a business and they need to make money and it's still better than buying individual movie tickets each time for God knows how much money. And that means no popcorn. But of course it gets worse because it always does here. Suddenly you're locked out of your account. Your password isn't working. You have to send verification pictures of your tickets. Oh, and yeah, all your credit card information, that was stolen too. Now it's definitely the time to cancel that subscription. But wait, what's this? It also won't let you cancel. Did it just resubscribe you without warning too? What the hell is going on? As it turns out, all of this was just the tip of the iceberg for MoviePass's impending doom. And unfortunately for their customers, the company seemed to try their damnedest to bring their subscribers down right along with them. Hello everyone, and welcome to The Corporate Casket. I'm the Illuminati, and today we're going to be talking about the subscription movie service gone wrong, MoviePass. Now, at first, MoviePass was just an innocent little company pushing their little innocent service to the avid moviegoer. While they absolutely exploded in 2017, they've actually been around since 2011, the OGs know. Now, what took them so long to make it big? Now, I can't entirely be sure, but I have a tiny inkling that the slow start was originally due to the price. At first, the subscription fee came at a hefty price of either $29 or $34. I'm sure many people saw that and just said, absolutely not. Why would I pay 30 plus dollars for a movie theater subscription pass when I could just get Netflix, HBO, and some other streaming services for the same price? Like, sorry, bud, it's not worth it. Somehow it didn't seem like MoviePass got the memo that their subscription might be just a little too pricey. And for the next three years, they just kept raising the cost, not lowering them. But soon they figured it out and everything swiftly began to change. By 2017, their subscription price was dropped to only $10 per month. And just like that, wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, their subscribers skyrocketed. Just like that, thousands of people were signed up to enjoy a movie a day, any day, every day for just one $10 payment. That is one hell of a deal, but there was something else going on in the background that users weren't entirely aware of. It turns out they weren't just making money off your subscription. As it turns out, they were making money off selling your data to theater chains. That's right, they tracked your spending patterns, got it all nice and organized in a cute little bundle and shipped it off to theaters for a percentage of the ticket sales and a cut of ticketing revenue from the movie studios. Now, this isn't completely shocking and it's definitely not at all rare. Facebook has been doing the same thing for years with retail stores. I'm still determined they can hear you speak because every time I say I want something, it seems to spontaneously appear in every ad I see online. But anyway, as they kept growing, their membership grew right along with them. 
In just one year, they went from having 20,000 subscribers to an astounding 3 million. That's a lot of moviegoers. In 2018 alone, they were responsible for over 20% of ticket sales. Still, not everyone was thrilled by their sudden success. AMC, the giant movie theater company, was among the first to point out the many issues that MoviePass would soon come to learn they had. Sure, the $10 a month brought in more subscribers, but how exactly were they going to pay back the movie theaters for all those tickets when one single ticket with AMC amounted to almost the same price as the monthly fee? The math just wasn't mathing. Now, AMC found the price to be unsustainable and said it only sets up customers for ultimate disappointment down the road. Due to this belief, they decided to say no to the movie subscription service, but they didn't shut the door on others with a better thought out plan for the future. As it turns out, AMC would wind up being very right in the assumption that MoviePass wasn't going to work out, but we didn't know that yet. At this point in time, people were still just going about their merry way, watching their movies, barely noticing the subscription fee coming out of their account. However, it would only take a couple months for the cracks in the business plan to start to show. Soon, the plan started to spontaneously change. At first, limiting your movies, and then with ticket limitations. By May of 2018, they would report $40 million in losses in just that month. The company was simply hemorrhaging money, and soon they would have a competitor too. Wouldn't you know it? AMC decided to jump in on the movie subscription train themselves. Who would have ever guessed they would do that? (sighs) Shock, horror, awe. Well, MoviePass didn't seem all that concerned when they trashed AMC on Twitter saying, heard AMC theaters jumped on board the movie subscription train, twice the price for one fourth the theater network and 60% fewer movies. Thanks for making us look good, AMC. AMC has repeatedly disparaged our model as a way to discourage our growth because all along they wanted to launch their own more expensive plan. We want to make movies more accessible. They want more profit. Well, MoviePass, it's an adorable sentiment, But does anyone want to take a guess at to which of the two companies ended up folding or which one was in the fight with the FTC? Anyone? I'll give you a clue. It's only one of them and it's the focus of this episode. Now, as more competition began rolling in, MoviePass was having just all types of problems. Their website was crashing, they stopped giving out tickets for new movies and they raised their subscription fee to $15. Only $5 less than the super expensive AMC plan. So would you look at that? Just one year after their explosion, they were suddenly floundering and just as quickly as they showed up, they started to fall apart. As the company was reeling from over $300 million in losses, they would be hit with a sudden invasion that immediately cast doubt on their efficiency and safety. Insert the data breach. Just months after MoviePass had to pause their service because they had literally run out of money, they were back up and running suddenly. Only now their subscribers were going on a downward trend. It's not shocking considering it's relatively inconvenient for a company to keep changing the terms of service and then just suddenly suspend it. As it turns out, that doesn't bode too well with your customers. By the time they came back, their internal records showed they had gone from 3 million subscribers to just 200,000. As it turns out, that was also the least of their problems. In August, 2019, a groundbreaking report was released on TechCrunch, which found that the company had exposed tens of thousands of customer card numbers and personal credit cards because a critical server was not protected with a password. And I'm sorry, but isn't a password just basic 101 shit for any company that takes credit card information? Like take the credit card and secure the credit card with a password. You could make it as silly as, I don't know, our company is going bankrupt one, two, three with an exclamation point at the end too for that extra security. Anything is better than nothing at all. You would think that everyone would get the memo, but it turns out MoviePass missed that one. A researcher, Mossab Hussein from the cybersecurity firm SpiderSilk found that one database from the company had been exposed. That one database had 161 million records on them, including debit card numbers and expiration dates. But it gets worse because of course it does. It also included some people's home addresses and all of their billing information. It's like handing a fraudster people's information on a silver fucking platter. Like wanna steal a debit card? Take over someone's identity? Here you go, chief, here's all the info. Now, when Hussein went to contact the MoviePass CEO, Mitch Lowe, which by the way, he's a gem and we'll talk more about him in just a minute. Lowe was nowhere to be found, there was no response. But spontaneously, when TechCrunch reached out to the company, finally took their database offline after it had been exposed for months. 
One day after their story went public, MoviePass decided it was time to warn their customers about the breach. How awfully convenient of them. In a typical, we fucked up company statement, a MoviePass spokesperson said, MoviePass takes this incident seriously and is dedicated to protecting our subscribers' information. We are working diligently to investigate the scope of this incident and its potential impact on our subscribers. And I'm sorry, but they didn't seem all that dedicated to protecting their subscribers' information when they decided to not password protect their information or when they just flat out ignored the researchers that tried to warn them about the breach. It seems they're about as dedicated to protecting their consumers' information as Casper is about going to the vet, which is not at all, unless of course they get some treats out of the situation. As bad as all of this is, it would soon seem that MoviePass would have some bigger issues to address because this isn't even the biggest issue. Like maybe the fact that they were lying to and misleading their customers while the company went down like the goddamn Titanic. Oh, and a fight with the Federal Trade Commission too. Yeah, 2019 was a very busy year for them. The data breach was MoviePass just getting started in the realm of awfulness. As the MoviePass dream began to quickly fall apart, the company needed to find some way to stay afloat because why just shut down the company until you figure out a better business plan when you could just scam your customers to try and save yourselves from drowning? Now that sounds like a plan. As it turns out, not securing their customers' information was actually the least of their problems. They were the real threat to their own customers. And in 2019, the extent of the scammy behavior was catapulted into the light users of the subscription service were suddenly met with an array of issues. One day, 75,000 users found that their passwords had been spontaneously invalidated. According to MoviePass, this was done because of suspicious activity or potential fraud. And that's fine, okay, whatever, things happen. But for 75,000 people at one time, that seems a little fishy. Then as those users went to change their passwords, they were met with a plethora of blockades along their way. Apparently the app wasn't accepting their email addresses. If they somehow got their email address back set up in the app, the security code for the password reset just miraculously never showed up. But all right, take a deep breath here. They could just click on the wonderful customer service email link, right? No, all that link did was bring them to a website that didn't work. Now you might be thinking at this point, okay, sometimes websites and apps crash. Maybe that's what was happening, right? Again, no. It turns out the 75,000 accounts were carefully selected to spontaneously break down to try and cut costs within the company. If people were considered avid moviegoers, AKA the people that cost the company the most money, their accounts were chosen to just instantaneously stop working. Isn't that just wonderful? Of course, some users would eventually complain to try and reach out to customer service to have their accounts back up and in working order, but this would prove to be a maddening experience and the customer service team would take weeks to respond. At one point, a high ranking executive decided to speak out to our dear friend, Mitch Lowe, the CEO, and alert him that this terribly thought out plan was likely so obvious that it drew the attention of federal regulators, which by the way, it did. Instead of heeding that warning, he decided to respond in written email because all criminal masterminds know the best thing to do is put your crimes in writing. Here's what he said. Okay, I get it. So let's try with a small group. Let's say 2% of our highest volume users. Ah, brilliant. Why stop the super illegal and immoral thing when you could just simply try to hide it better? There's no way that would go wrong, but wait. There's more, because in addition to the impromptu shutdown of thousands of passwords, MoviePass used another nifty scheme to cut costs and bother their customers. In May of 2018, MoviePass started the super tedious and ultra annoying process of making 20% of their moviegoers send verification of the tickets they purchased by taking a picture and uploading a photo of their ticket stubs. Users were told they were randomly selected, but they weren't. The CEO had decided who would be involved in the new process. One small problem though, those that found themselves forced to upload images for proof of their tickets realized quickly that this was actually an impossible task. The process didn't work on smartphones and the MoviePass software failed. Of course, customer service was absolutely no help. So that $10 monthly charge became essentially useless. Oh yeah, and if people couldn't get their account fixed fast enough, it was also canceled. But wait, because there's still more actually. They used another strategy called Tripwire, which put a limit on how much people could use the service. Say the limit was three. You could go see three movies and just like that, your service was canceled because you reached your limit. 
Oh, and you had no idea there was a limit in the first place because the company also didn't announce that. The subscribers were also unaware that their service was canceled until they literally arrived at the movie theater and were told it didn't work. Amazing. Great stuff, really. Like you show up to a movie all ready to use the subscription that you paid for just to get told that you no longer had access to it. That's not annoying at all, MoviePass. The least they could have done was warn their customers that this was happening, but that would have been too considerate of them. So after all this headache, it is understandable that a lot of people probably wanted to cancel their subscriptions. And I mean, what the hell is the point of having this if you can't even use it? But wait, one more second, because canceling your account seemed to also be an impossible feat if you were doing it yourself. If you canceled your subscription in August, 2018 and decided to go back to MoviePass just to check out some movie times or maybe double check your cancellation status, you were suddenly met with a pop-up that made people aware that they were suspending ticket verification and peak pricing. This screen gave you two options, either more details or accept, nothing else. So you might hit accept thinking, hey, this is just me acknowledging that I saw the message, but that's not what you were actually accepting. Instead, that little button automatically re-enrolled you back into the subscription. So suddenly thousands of people found that they resubscribed to a service that was bleeding money and scamming their customers in an attempt to make up for it. Eventually that executive was warned that the feds were probably going to find out what they were doing and come after them. And you know, that little hint, it happened. In June, 2019, the Federal Trade Commission released a complaint against the company detailing everything we've just gone through. Not only were they doing all of this, but they were also misleading customers knowingly, which by the way, is a big no-no in the eyes of the FTC. In their press release, they stated, MoviePass and its executives went to great lengths to deny customers access to the service they paid for while also failing to secure their personal information. Whoopsie. It turns out that lying to customers and allowing their private information to be open to anyone who feels they want it doesn't usually end well. Who would have guessed that? Not shockingly, the company decided to settle the complaint, but it really didn't make too much of a difference because in September, 2019, MoviePass finally died. And just like that, the movie subscription service, which pretty much everyone agreed was likely doomed from the beginning, finally sealed its fate. They were done, broke, and filed for bankruptcy. Everyone waved goodbye to the sinking ship that finally sunk, never to be seen again, or will it? That's right, they're staging a comeback. It's time for MoviePass 2.0. And before we continue to talk about the supposed comeback of MoviePass, let's just take a quick moment to thank today's sponsors. Now, cooking is not something that is always top of mind for me. It's not really my favorite thing to do, but I do love the result. Thankfully, HelloFresh is here to take a lot of the pain out of cooking that I feel, which is really like the prep and getting the right ingredients and stuff together. And they bundle that all together for me. And they can do it for you because they make home cooking fun, easy, and affordable. And that's why they're America's number one meal kit. Now, if you've been following my YouTube community tab or my Twitter or my Patreon server, you know that about a little over a week and a half ago, I had some pretty major abdominal esophageal surgery. And so because of that, I'm actually taking advantage of a feature from HelloFresh that I haven't really had the chance to fully experience. And I'm, it was super easy. So let me tell you about it. So with HelloFresh, they make it really easy to like pick your meals every week and when they're being delivered delivered and all of that. But if you're going on vacation, you need to take some time away from having HelloFresh boxes delivered to your house or any of that, they have an easy feature to just kind of put the service on hold for a little bit. So I quickly went into the app and I went through my different weeks of like the surgery and the next couple weeks upcoming and just put everything on hold because I'm like, hey, I'm recovering from surgery right now. I'm really not gonna be able to cook for a bit. And it was super easy. And in a couple weeks, I think it's about four weeks, I'm gonna continue to receive HelloFresh boxes all over again. And you bet your bippy, I have already picked out my meal for the next couple weeks. Super easy to get started. So if you're ready to try some delicious home cooking with HelloFresh, make sure you go to hellofresh.com slash casket16 and use code casket16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. Again, that's hellofresh.com slash casket16 and use code casket16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. This episode is also sponsored by Honey, the easy way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. And I think a lot of you know already what Honey is. Honey is the little drop down guy that pops out in online checkouts and is like, hey, would you like me to search some coupons for you? And I'm like, absolutely, heck yes. 
And recently I've been using it actually on medical supplies, which you'll never believe it, but Honey works with medical supply websites too, because like I said, I just had a bunch of surgery. And so I was searching for like a certain brand of, I think they're called like silicone patches that you put like over your scars and your incision points after so that it helps your scars heal better. And so I was searching for a specific brand from my doctor and voila, I found them. And then Honey popped down and was like, hey, we have a 15% off coupon. And I was like, you're freaking kidding me, right? This is awesome. And Honey doesn't just work on your desktop. It also works on your iPhone. You can activate it on Safari and save on the go. So if you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid and supporting the show. And I'd never recommend something that I don't use. So make sure you get Honey for free at joinhoney.com casket. That's joinhoney.com casket. While MoviePass was laying dormant in the wings, licking their wounds from their failed endeavor, other subscription services were popping up all over the place. And those services were thriving. Cinemark had created its own $10 a month service and hit 1 million members. AMC's Stubbs A-List was up and running with 1 million subscribers and even Regal Unlimited, which allowed people to see as many movies as they wanted was killing it. Of course, the big difference here is all of these subscription services were run by the movie theaters themselves. So they had no pesky middleman asking for the price of tickets back as MoviePass did. But still, they had seen MoviePass's potential, taken the idea for themselves and ran with it. I'm just kind of imagining the MoviePass executives like curled up in a corner, crying into a large bucket of movie theater popcorn, watching this all unfold. But have no fear, the newly installed CEO and original founder who they fired, by the way, Stacy Spikes, is here to save the day. In the beginning, Spikes was proud of his movie pass creation, thinking it would take over the movie world and surely would prove to be a massive money-making success. He recalls a fond memory of going to the movies, standing at a kiosk and pulling out his new movie pass card to buy tickets. I walk up to the kiosk and the person on my left pulls out a movie pass card. The person on my right pulls out a movie pass card and they're literally looking and smiling at each other. And you knew we were all part of something big. And I created that, and I never forgot that feeling. But when MoviePass decided to change the subscription fee to just $10, he sensed something was going to go horribly wrong. He tried to speak out and tell the company to change the fee back to the higher rate, but unfortunately for him and the company as a whole, no one listened. In fact, he was unceremoniously ousted from his own company shortly after. Now he's back in control and has a plan to fix the mistakes in the past. At least he hopes. Spikes tells Vulture that the new version of MoviePass will be different this time. No more shady shit. They plan to build a consensual relationship with their customers instead of the absolute shit show they had before and have lofty goals to claim 30% of the movie going market by 2030. Now that seems like a bit of a daydream of a goal for a company that just went bankrupt three years ago, but hey, I'll bite. What's the difference about this MoviePass 2.0? So the reality is right now, we're not entirely sure how much the subscription price will be, but Spikes does say it won't be $10. And that's probably a good idea after what happened with that price last time. Also this time, they're planning on using credits to watch a movie. Instead of the free movie ticket purchases with the prior business model, users will have to acquire credits to watch their movies. So how do you get those credits? Well, through their new feature called pre-show. This plays ads on your phone and you get credits for each ad you watch. This isn't some brand new invention by the company. We've seen it before with ads on phone games, video games, pretty much anything. Watch more ads and get more things. But this one's a little creepy because this new feature would track people's eyeballs through facial recognition to ensure that they were actually watching the videos instead of throwing them on the bed and walking away to do something more interesting. It's just creepy to me. It's just, I don't know what other word, it's creepy, it's weird. If like the ad is pulled up on my phone and you know, that took me away from whatever I'm doing, like, you know, that should be enough, like case closed. Like I'm listening to it, that's good enough. But Spikes has a super eloquent way of explaining this by saying, your attention has value and should be controlled by you. So with pre-show, we wanted to create the first technology that allows you to monetize your own attention and set a value exchange for that. And honestly, that's a really pretty way of phasing that. However, I'm sorry, I still find it a little insane that they will be literally tracking my eyeballs. But with all the different movie subscription services popping up all over the place, it's not surprising that Spike seems overly excited to get MoviePass 2.0 up and running. According to him, we should see a new iteration of the failed business sometime this summer, which at this point is pretty much over. So where the hell is it? 
It also doesn't help that there seems to be no announcement anywhere if MoviePass 2.0 has been able to broker any deals with theaters. So that doesn't make me feel too hopeful that they'll be back anytime soon. But as we wait to see, even if MoviePass 2.0 can arrive, I'm not feeling all too hopeful that the new iteration will do much better. When you destroy your public image this drastically, it's a little difficult to come back bigger and better, but we'll have to wait and see. But with all of that being said, that is where we are ending today's episode of The Corporate Casket. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something new here today. And if you did, make sure that you're liking, following, and subscribing to stay up to date on all the latest episodes. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure when you're subscribing, you're hitting that bell notification icon too, so you can be notified every single time I upload. Thank you all so much for joining me for today's episode. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.